Good morning, everybody. My name is Bulgan Murin. I'm from Mongolia. I'm a consultant working in the energy and environmental fields. And this particular paper is a result of my last year's research I did for the United Nations Convention for Climate Change, Secretariat in Bonn. And it's co-authored with Ms. Tracy Crow. And unfortunately, she is not here today. So uh, I think my time is quite limited <laughs> because of the previous uh, arrangements. So I'll try to make it short so and easier for you to understand, uh, just focusing on the one side. So maybe I can just take an example. Uh, ladies, can you stand up? Oh, ladies only. OK. Thank you, please be seated. And men, gentlemen. Okay. So how, what is the balance, if you see? Yeah, so that's the focus of my research. Uh, we want to have more representation of women in uh, particularly clean development mechanism. Why women? Because when we do projects at the grassroots level, it's the household wives, and they have to take care of the all household commitments, which is energy and environmentally relevant. So, uh, focus is, uh, there are two types of uh, projects. So, my focus is mostly for small-scale projects, because of, of the um, uh, size. And uh, it took me six months to complete this research. And key sectors are the main uh, sectors, and agriculture, energy, and environment. So my objective, as you already understand, is to enhance gender mainstreaming in project activities. And so hopefully to provide improvement of relevant methodologies. So uh, these are the key uh, activities I did uh, during the research, uh, mostly literature review and also uh, looking at the methodologies and uh, conducting survey to the direct stakeholders and comparison of different standards. Uh, apart from CDM, we have a voluntary, voluntary standards and consultation with relevant stakeholders and data analysis. These are the uh, main background for my research. And then uh, I came up with fi a final uh, report and uh, re recommendations based on the feedback. So uh, here, um, the small-scale CDA methodologies, uh, UNFCCC uh, has pub uh, printed the publication for the methodologies where uh, the project uh, projects has to, it's kind of a criteria that projects has to uh, meet those criteria according to CDA methodologies. And um, the key point here I just <coughs> will mention about the cost-benefit analysis. I took a case uh, for a project, small-scale project, and then I will come up with the recommendations based on those research. So sitting methodology booklet, uh, they have different methodologies because of the project type and sector. And uh, here there's a new thing that they added is the, you see the icon here is the it's assumption that this project will have a direct or indirect impact on women and children. So then I look at those icons and look at the methodologies. So these are the categorization. And here is the small scale methodologies. So I narrowed down my research into small scale methodologies and how they are utilized. And if you see here, these are the sizes and then percentages, how they're being utilized. So if you see renewable energy and uh, low greenhouse gas emission, basically uh, small sizes are more of a, a having impact for gender, their numbers are a bit less. And then I focused on the 17 projects that uh, evaluated to be a very good uh, co uh, benefits like uh, uh, local economy, sustainable development, and also uh, saving 
uh, time for a woman and uh, shortlisted the project of high number of benefits. So these are the uh, categorization, uh, how they created socially, economically, and what are the empowerment they made these projects. So as you can see under the economic, they have created job creation and enterprise creation, poverty elevation, and social health. Of course, when you have a more clean energy, then health benefits are greater, like less smoke in a household, and then its impacts, and then lifestyle improvement. And also there is some conflict uh, because of the natural resources. You see uh, in Africa and Asia, there conflict our resources. So if you look at also how this uh, uh, solution uh, provided uh, lesser conflict, preventing uh, this kind of issues. And when you have uh, more uh, empowerment in those uh, projects, then communities are more empowered and then it, because of the CDM is quite rel uh, relatively new, so their trainings and how uh, the trainings and uh, uh, are giving impacts on women and children. So uh, the project development, uh, there is a project uh, documents, and I look at the uh, its impact on households. So the Finland government, uh, the had pub published a book, CDM and Gender, they developed a gender assessment tool through uh, creation of indicative questions. How does this project save time and uh, had um, positive impacts? And this, uh, these are the lists, as you can see, I mentioned just before, health benefits. And so I shortlisted five projects and identified main characteristics of the most uh, positive projects. And here I can see that uh, it's just an extraction of a project document. And if you see the consultation process is, uh, it's, it was very good that uh, when you have a consultation meeting, you have number of women and men. So, but in CDM official document, they don't really require this. Uh, this is the gold standard, which uh, they put the, one of the criteria necessary to provide. So based on this research, I uh, uh, try to identify main key characteristics. And first was the bottom-up approach, which uh, actually um, project needs assessment prior to the, any CDM projects. Those projects who conducted project needs assessment was quite uh, successful. Uh, stakeholder consultation I already mentioned. And these are the income generation. And when you have more community-based projects, you have less dependency. And then that's your uh, empowering the woman. And then there should be some incentive for women for the involvement of project cycle. Okay, I'll just skip the survey. I'll just look at the cost benefit analysis. So there is a, a project I uh, chosen from the India. It's a Samoha. It's called the replace inefficient uh, stoves uh, through more efficient stoves. And these are the number of households, 21,500 households. And then I try to monetize, monetize the value and identify social impacts. <coughs> so. When you have a project and you conduct uh, cost-benefit analysis, the traditional approach is that uh, you identify uh, all the costs and calculate and how would be the benefits in terms of output. And the, the other way, uh, the other cost-benefit analysis which I uh, try to establish is that is social uh, cost-benefit analysis, because in this project, for example, there was. Um, there was not, there wasn't uh, any calculation of save it time, save it fuel cost, because when you have more efficient stoves, then your consumption of wood or coal is reduced, and then thus you have more save it uh, time for the woman going there and back, and also health benefits. So my uh, argument is that if you include those uh, costs, then as you can see in the result, uh, output is much greater. So based on this, my, uh, our recommendations and suggestions is, uh, for the CDM was uh, let's try to have more project needs assessment prior to the project. 
how the community's uh, needs are, and then let's have also gender disaggregated data in the stakeholder consultation because sometimes there's this very important issues like uh, stoves, then if you don't have any women, because in traditionally Asia and Africa, you household main leader is a woman, and there should be comprehensive stakeholder consultation. And capacity building is because the CDM is rel rel relatively new in uh, uh, most of the countries. There should be some interactive online training, and especially there should be target for local consultants, uh, strengthen strengthening their awareness. Uh, and also, there, if there's any CDM training or workshop, uh, there should be some kind of gender component. Uh, that's what I felt. And uh, these are the methodology relevant. Uh, uh, so I will just focus on the last one, in the concept of resource efficiency, uh, like water purification and when you use uh, rainwater collection. So uh, you know that we have a scarcity of water and if you have the water purification and combine with rainwater collection, because uh, this will th this might, might be a good uh, implication for the projects to combine these concepts, and then also using the solar heating and cooling, this kind of more practical uh, recommendations. So here, so I could see that there are so many gender positive impacts that projects might have but they're not being recorded and reported and re-evaluated. That's my final conclusion. Thank you.